welcome to another episode of the Miles Offside Podcast, where we talk a little bit of football and a whole lot of nonsense. My name is Oscar Puente, also known as Footy From Afar, and with me, as always, are my co-hosts, Quiz Wizard Chuck Bailey and Super Producer Ian Stimson. Ian, do you want us to check in on Posh Island this week I'm or no? I'm happy for you to check in on Posh Island this week. All right, well then let's hear all about Posh Island. What's up with Posh uh, Island? We beat the Blue Nose... I, I won't drop a C-bomb this early. It's, it's, no, it's not right. Uh, we beat Birmingham City 3-0 in a, in a result that no one thought would happen. Uh, we're still not out of the relegation zone yet, though. That will happen when Derby get their 12-point uh, deduction for administration. That's what we're relying on to save us at the minute. Uh, but uh, no, a fairly, fairly good performance and uh, 3-0 win. So we'll take that, definitely. Hang on, is it only 12 points for their... No, well, good point. I've, it's, I've heard there's something else pending as well, and potentially it's 21 there points. There is a nine-point pending uh, deduction, so they are, they presumably want them all to happen in the same season, so as it's just done and they just can plan for League One next year. Yeah, some of it should have happened last year. They should have, maybe they should have just tried to form a breakaway league, um, and then they, they wouldn't have had this problem. Yeah, Derby. The Derby. Frank, formerly of Frank Lampard and Mason yeah. Mountain, Tammy Abraham yeah. Derby? Currently of Wayne Rooney Derby, yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wayne Rooney, who is not looking good. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's 38 going on 72, I think, <laughs> at this point. Yeah, it's a strong look. Um, oh. But if you want some, well, is it is it good good racism news or not? I don't know. But two two Birmingham City fans were pointed out by uh, Nathan Thompson, Peterborough defender, as having racially abused him, and they were arrested, I believe, in the ground and have been charged. Nice. Fuck yeah. So, Fuck those dudes. Nathan Nathan Thompson? Nathan Thompson, yeah. Nathan Thompson. We like Nathan Thompson. Can we give Derby like nine points back for that? <laughs> What's it you got to do with Derby? There's nothing to do oh, with Derby. That, are we not still talking about Derby? I can't keep track no, no, of the no. fucking championship teams, man. I can't keep track of the my half of the team, Premier League. A defender on my team was racially abused, oh. and he pointed it out to the referee, who passed it on to the fourth official, and apparently was dealt with immediately, and they've been arrested and charged. That's awesome. That's fucking great. Yeah. Way to go. I assume that some Birmingham fans were also co- cooperative in pointing them out, because otherwise I don't know how that would have happened, you know? So, yeah. Good stuff, I guess. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, obviously that's going to keep happening anyway. You can't control that. So within that situation, you want people getting arrested in front of other people, make them look like real dickheads. It's fucking yeah, great. Exactly. Uh, Chuck, let's check in. Last time we brought it up in the intro band section, you had not seen Shang-Chi yet. You have now seen Shang-Chi. Oh, oh. So give the people your thoughts. Um, yeah, it's really, really fucking good. There you go. All right. Well, if you are joining us for the first time, thank you. We are very happy to have you. We are one American and two Brits, and we try to talk about the Premier League. But we mostly get distracted, uh, and we usually kick things off around here with our famous rapid, rapid, rapid fire news segment. Uh, this week, most of the stories were racism related. As I went through and were picking headlines out, that is a particularly touchy subject in my life at the moment for reasons that I don't at all want to talk about. Um, but that is a sore subject, so I think we're going to forego that. But I do still encourage everyone to. Just, you know, browse the BBC Football News Twitter or go on their webpage and see all the things that are going on because there were quite a few stories. Shout out the two separate incidents of Chelsea fans being garbage, racist, prejudiced people. Uh, Fuck you guys. Get out of my club. But uh, let's just go straight to the fixtures, boys. Is that all right with you? Yes, let's do. Absolutely. All right. Well, we kick things off then. On Friday, hope you all remembered your early kickoff and your wild cards and whatnot. <laughs> um, we set Mark Daffin so many reminders and alarms. I know. Oh. I was listening to your FPL pod and I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to text him also. Even though I don't even play FPL and I still listen to your FPL yeah, pods. Man. And I was like, that's right. We got to let him know. Uh, but it was a Friday kickoff. We had Newcastle 1, Leeds 1. Newcastle 1.3 to Leeds is 2.2. Uh, I didn't watch that because it was Friday and it w- I was at work and things are more fun to do than that on Fridays. Um, you know, I'm not watching Newcastle Leeds, but <laughs> did either of you catch this one? Any uh, Anything of note from that? Mike Dean refereeing, maybe some celebrity ref news <laughs> or anything? You know what? As, I mean, I'm sure we'll touch on refereeing later, but I don't remember Dino doing much in this one. He had quite a quiet one. There was enough entertainment on the pitch. Well, it was very He did manage to touch the ball a couple of times. He did he he did sort of want to be a player a few times. But other than that Like getting involved in celebrations like with Spurs <laughs> or actually like No, he touched the ball once. He got in in, in uh, 
in the, in the way of a Newcastle player once. I can't remember who it was now. He was quite pissed off. But yeah, but Deedee just in his classic sort of way just shrugged and went, that's life, mate. Fuck off. Deal with it. <laughs> I'm the big I am. There was a couple of those this weekend. I remember there was a like Tottenham counterattack that like got stopped by the referee by Paul Tierney, um, yeah. which was hilarious. So thanks for that, Paul Tierney. Good job. Yeah. Just again, showing how fucking useless they all are. Um, yeah, Leeds... Um, Again, sorry, Leeds fans, mm. gave you the kiss of death this year because you're just not doing much and you've now lost even more players. I don't think they have any centre-backs left in Leeds uh, <laughs> through either suspension or injury. Um, Jack Harrison's now off with COVID. Uh, there was a whole thing with Rafinha. Is he injured here? Well, Is he not? who knows? He- I mean, he, he came off early. Um, having done some damage for FPL FPL teams who hang on to him, but um, yeah, it was there was a rumor that he had some sort of thigh issue, and then he came off about I don't know sixty seventy minutes with either a thigh or a hip or some some issue. It all seems a bit unclear. So he's yellow flagged on FPL, but um, yeah, who knows whether that's going to be more long term or a niggle that he struggles to get rid of. But um, yeah, he was he was one of the Leeds players who. As always, actually, I mean, you guys know I love Rafinha. I think he's such a fun player. Oh, and he's fantasy gold in any yeah. format. Well, I don't know. Is he good at FPL? He's great in fan tracks. He is. Yeah, no, he is. He is really good. And he's in FPL this year. He's 6.5 or something. It's just, you know, you have to have him, I think. Um, but yeah, it was a, an, another one where sort of Leeds struggled to get get hold of the match. Yeah. You know, like you might expect they would. Uh, Newcastle are always a team that you think you can... You, you can dominate a match, especially with their levels of fitness usually, but they just don't seem with it at the minute, do they? No, not at all. They're like, I mean, I don't really think there's much more to go on here, but they're 17th this year um, and by understats expected points, they are 17th. Oof. Yeah, on FB ref by expected goal difference 90, they're 15th, so not much better. I wonder if this is Bielsa burnout. Everybody talks about Bielsa burnout. We didn't see it at all last season. They somehow made it all the way to the end, maybe because everything's a little bit slower. But the nonstop soccer, 18 months in, like at some point, teams that run that much are going to start to fall off. I wonder if that's what's happening with Leeds. I haven't watched enough of their games to actually be able to say that with any confidence. I'm just thinking out loud as far as what might be happening. Um, but Chuck, did you have a take that you were in the middle of saying? I think I cut you off there. Uh, another take. Um, do, 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 do. Um, should I talk about the one good thing in Newcastle? Alan St. Maximan, he's fucking brilliant, oh, isn't he? he, um, he just... Loves a spin, loves a move, loves just jinking around the place. What a fucking legend. Um, <laughs> and Steve Bruce just getting shouted at. Shouted over, sorry, um, with with regards to tactics by the first team coach, yeah. um, with his, I believe he said it was something like he they need to have hope or they're not going to perform well or something, and that's that's exactly it? what you want to to lead that charge into the fucking valley of death. Yeah, someone's been watching Ted Lasso. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Just sound bites and feel good stuff. Uh, all right. Well, let's move on then uh, to Saturday. Uh, early kickoff, 12.30 England, 7.30 a.m. East Coast time, 4.30 a.m. West Coast time. We had Wolves 0, Brentford 2. Wolves 0.6 to ah, Brentford 2.4 on XG. So a truly, beast. truly atrocious XG scoreline. And Brentford just putting it down. Uh, Wolves, beast. man. He, uh, Chuck, are you okay? <laughs> What's happening over there? He was there? just shouting bees until you acknowledge him. Oh, bees. Okay. Bees. Bees, bees, bees. bees. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, That's, they're ridiculous. What are Brentford? I don't get it. They've broken. Uh, yeah, they were right. Everyone was right. All the stats heads were right. They're like the second best defense in the league. This is ridiculous. Third best expected goal difference per 90, just behind Wet City and Liverpool. Like Fourth on expected points. Yeah. If they could score more, because their XG is... Oh, no. Oh, uh, it'll come. It'll come. Yeah, they're in the middle <laughs> of the table for XG, but they're second for XGA per 90. Like, they're they're very good. If you include disallowed goals in this game, then Ivan Tony did have a hat trick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, yeah, just in the wrong places or, or, or vision being blocked kind of thing. Yeah. But he, he, he scored, um, had a beautiful assist from Mbumo. Um, yeah, that was a good day at the office for him. It was. I mean, we talk about Leeds get being not knowing how to deal with uh, Saint Maximan. Fuck me, Wolves did not know how to deal with Tony at all, did they? It was no really. You know, they were getting desperate towards the end and just bundling him down. I mean, yeah, 
not you know we'll, we'll, what has happened to Wolves defense it just seems oh it's terrible they're they're like bad they're actually bad both eye test wise and like numbers wise Wolves are what eighth or ninth for expected goal difference per 90 like somewhere bottom of mid table or middle of mid table I should say their expected goals allowed is also around ninth their expected goals is seventh um, these are not the numbers where they want to be. They see themselves competing for at least Europa, if not, you know, maybe trying to push mm. for top four with a bit of luck. But that is that is not looking good. Is it Jimenez? Are we worried about Jimenez and his head injury coming back? Is it just Treore wasting every counterattack, like <laughs> booting it into the stands? Uh, like? um, I think it got to a point in that game, like people were laughing at Treore, but it was just as the, into like the late game where he started going a bit skew with his crosses, like, I mean, he's created a hell of a lot of chances and just Jimenez can't put them away or, or isn't doing anything. You know, yeah. he had that ridiculous Rabona. Oh, like, my God. God knows yeah. a, why a he's trying for, that. It's a microcosm of wolf season that in was, one moment. That yeah. was so funny. I was fucking dying <laughs> laughing. What a jerk. The commentator couldn't hold the commentator couldn't hold it in either. Like, they were laughing as well. Like, and not even just like a little titter, like, couldn't get the words out. So... <laughs> Poor guy, and then towards the end, like getting angry, and he threw off his his headband. Oh, God, worried it, about him. <laughs> it looked, I mean, it looked bloody. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe something could happen there, which it's, I don't. I don't really appreciate. But then going in for like headers, like he's just, he's not the player we knew. And and fair enough, you would get that off of the back of a head yeah. injury. And I'm sure he doesn't want to use that as an excuse. But you know, it, it it was kind of noticeable that he was just, it's it's still, I think, just like that hesitation and not having that bravery to get in there because Wolves are creating and Beefy Boy will just, he, he, you know, they call, um they called like David Silva um, the magician, but I really think Adama Traore, because of how strong, how quick he is, <laughs> like he genuinely creates space out of nothing. Like he's got a player face up and there's no space. There's like three yards behind him and like you blink and all of a sudden he's behind the other player and you're like how did you how did you run round someone in 3 yards yeah. how do you, how it's ridiculous slippery samson at down my try away <laughs> yeah your wife's new favorite <laughs> oh no yeah i pointed him out that was a mistake fucking hell yeah, that's that's completely your fault. Why would you? Uh, I turn the screen off every time Emily walks by and Wolves are on TV, obviously. We don't need to see oiled up Adonis. I think I think he's I think Oscar I think um, Troyori is now on both Ian and his wife's list. <laughs> <laughs> he's their hall pass. Yeah, he better never he better not step foot in uh, Peterborough. <laughs> He'll get accosted <laughs> at the asbestos train station. <laughs> let's not let's not though step on Brentford. I do want to give them some sort of praise. Like we don't necessarily know what it is they're doing, but it's very impressive for a promoted team. They could very well end up being like this year's. The promoted team that did well a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. Sheffield United. Sheffield, yes, thank you. Damn it, you told me. But yeah, 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 Sheffield, you one would, of the you Sheffields. Uh, they were really good when they came up. Is that going to be Brentford? Maybe. They have that real proper horrible Bournemouth shithouse lie <laughs> roll around on the floor no injuries like I saw it against Palace they've done it the next week they especially did it in this game after they went down to 10 men um, for the last half an hour as well we didn't say that like Wolves couldn't breach them when they were there for the last half an hour oh, yeah they had I forgot men. about that dumb sending off Jesus Christ what was he yeah, that thinking was, that was bad and he, he was about to get sent off because Thomas Frank knew it was coming as well yeah. and then lo and behold just do- hold yourself in for another five seconds mate Jesus Tell the people what happened. Come on. And some people might not have context. Is it Baptiste? He just went in for a ridiculous challenge when he's already on a yellow. It was just a, it was it was a yellow card. It was a second yellow. <sighs> the player had beaten him. I don't think the player had even got out of their own half no, yet. Oh, so we're in the middle of the park. If he did, it was we? very yeah. close. And he just like just wraps his arms around him and pulls him down to the ground. No, no danger at all. It's just no, unbelievable. Mad. Well, no danger from Wolves either after that. A half hour against 10 men and they couldn't generate shit. 0.6 XG. No shots on target. Against the promoted side down to 10 men. No shots, no on, shots target. on target. No shots on target. Bad. Very, very bad. Oh, and Markel. This was the match as well where Markel literally tackled Ivan Tony, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. Twice. He did it He did it once, had his arms around Ivan Tony at a corner. Ref came over, told him, don't do it anymore. <laughs> did it again. Yeah. Ref didn't say anything. It then goes out for a corner again, and then literally he just tackles it, him to the it, ground. It, and then, honestly, and then it was sheer panic, though, because the physical mismatch between the two of them 
was insane. But because, but but that's because like Brentford are all giant. They've they got are, like yeah. four players over six foot yeah. four. Shh. So like Marcal on Tony was like the closest matchup right. they could have to him. <laughs> so on set pieces, like long throws, corners. Like I said, when Palace played, like that was the only time in that match I felt really concerned. Mm. Um, especially now with our record at set pieces not being very good, but yeah, that's I mean fair play to Brentford. Um, they've their xga is three point six um, for the season so far, um, and they've conceded two goals in five games. Stellar, stellar, stellar stuff. Uh, so shout out Brentford, I guess. Yep, always, all, also always hang around for an Ivan Tony post match because they're absolute fucking gold every single time. Oh, are time. they? I have not caught them. What's uh, what's the deal there? Ivan Tony's on his match on this fucking. Yeah, list but stick well. him on the list. Yeah, definitely. Oh come on, he's a Peter. He's former Peter. Of course, Peter he's a legend. The list. Come on, yeah, yeah, come on. But no, every every single time, just like oh, how far how far can this team go? And he just looks down the lens like we can win the league. <laughs> just like, just absolutely love him. It's just confidence exudes out of him. I mean, technically, that's literally as far as the team could go. Yeah, that's math. It's right. It's just science. Brentford could, you know, start a Super League, perhaps. Ah, speaking <laughs> of the Super League, we have uh, the first of the 10 a.m. slash 15 p.m. slash 7 a.m. on the West Coast right. matches. 15 p.m. Why, why do we need the times? Why do we need the times? I Saturday. don't because the people want to know. I'm, I want to say them. That's why. Uh, Liverpool <laughs> 3, Arsenal. Crystal Palace, Chuck, 0, Liverpool 2.8 to Palace is 0.9 on XG. Sorry to say that's pretty comprehensive of a victory over uh, your team by he Liverpool. Did the old, he did the switch of Rui and that's not the next fixture. Isn't it? It is on uh, on FB Ref, it is. I mean, we could talk about Burnley Arsenal. Um, Arsenal only scored a three free kick against Burnley. Okay, yeah, he really doesn't want to talk about Liverpool 3-0. <laughs> well, he's wrapped up Burnley Arsenal in a sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Burnley Arsenal. Uh, Burnley 1.3, Arsenal 1.201. Shout out Arsenal, I guess, for beating Burnley, whatever. <laughs> Fuck them. Who cares? Burnley of the week? Uh, oh, I didn't actually decide that yet. No, no, that's not Burnley of the week. We'll get to Burnley <laughs> uh, of the week Maybe later. a quick one, Ian. Burnley of the week! There you go. Thanks. All right. Uh, I guess we'll save <laughs> Liverpool battles for a bit, so let's get Norwich Watford out of the way. Uh, 0.9, 1.9 on XG, Watford winning 3-1. So <laughs> slight Burnley, I guess, not really. Um, I don't know anything about either of these teams. They're both teams that are not in uh, the go area on, of on. the table I care about. <laughs> oh, I was wait. I was going to see there, Ian, if he actually gave a fact or a, or a thing, whether it was just like they were both promoted. <laughs> there you go, they were both promoted. <laughs> And used to be, and they both wear yellow as well, I think, unless I'm getting a colorblind moment, in which case one of them might wear orange, but I'm pretty sure. Brilliant. I mean, you can see yellow. That's fine. Yeah, but orange would look like yellow, so if one of the, I used to think wolves wore yellow. Yeah, vibrant piss. Um, <laughs> Norwich, oh, <laughs> fucked. Um, oh, it doesn't look good, does it? 14 Premier League defeats in a row. Oh, ouch. That's the anti-city. Uh, same manager. Yeah. For He's now. not in danger, but... Yeah. Will, will they stick with him again, do you think, if it gets really bad? I mean, it seemed like the right decision last time because they came up earlier than they meant to. But Yeah, I mean, it's know. sad that it seems so alien that like they could just stick with him. I mean, does a club of Norwich's size, do they get a better better manager? Do they think... Yeah, he, good point. He's, is there a long-term project? Because right now... I mean, I don't see any real positives, are there? The numbers are not. They're 19th on XG, just slightly above the worst team in the league, Tottenham. They are 19th on expected goals allowed, just slightly above the worst team in the league, Newcastle. And on expected goal difference per 90, they are last place. Um, So not looking good for Norwich. No, there's no... There's no positives. Positives. I mean, and we thought, you know, Ian Ian mentioned on his FPL pods um, that... Uh, he thought this was the time if you were going to get Norwich players in, and fair enough, you know, Pookie gets a goal, that's good. Uh, yeah. um, well, I think I only said Pookie, I'm not sure about. <laughs> oh, he's taking Norwich it back, players. he's walking it back already. Uh, yeah. Well, no, I think I said I was I was steadfast in my support for Pookie, I'm not sure uh-huh. I mentioned anything. And, and steadfast in your targeting of Watford as well. Yes, and that um, hasn't gone well, I'll admit that. Well, I say that hasn't gone well, this was the first goal they scored since the first 45 minutes of game week one. So, oh, and it's against Norwich. Good, so, good you know, clearly if, if Norwich are the ones to target, then fair enough. We'll see how Watford get on among, you know, the other 18 teams they've got to play. But um, yeah, it's not it's not started well for my hatred of Watford, has it? Yeah, they're 12th unexpected goals allowed Watford. So they're decidedly mid-table of the okay. defence so far. Um, obviously sample size, but we are getting to the point where like five matches is where you've played almost a quarter of the league. So the sample size is getting big enough. 
to be somewhat mm-hmm. informative. Um, decidedly mid-table defense so far. So, but uh, but that's about the extent of my opinions about Watford. So, unless you guys have anything to add, let's move <laughs> on to the actual big matches from the 10 a.m. slot. Uh, Chuck, you can't put it off anymore. I'm throwing this now. Liverpool three, Crystal Palace zero. Liverpool two point eight to Crystal Palace zero point nine. Chuck, give us the Palace side of this. Um, getting dicked 3-0, pretty comprehensive on the XG scoreline as well. Getting dicked. Did you watch the game? Did you watch the game? I did, yes. Yes, we didn't get dicked. Uh, I will not well, say that hmm. it was dicked. Jurgen Klopp said beforehand it was going to be a tough match. He said even Jurgen Klopp, the manager of the team that did said dicking, um, said that it was not a 3-0 game. Um, it's worrying to me the fact that all three of the goals came from uh, the second ball at set pieces. Mm. which is something we're starting to see a bit more. Um, You know, it happened to Chelsea. It was a free kick, so fair enough, and a worldie. But then, you know, all three of them, I mean, it was three corners, I think. Everything comes with. So you'd like to see a bit more fight to get that second ball. Um, But otherwise, I think we had a really good account of ourselves. Um, We came close a number of times. Um, I think... It's going to sound really churlish, the fact that I bring up this decision, uh, this this topic, sorry, during the Liverpool Palace game, but I thought across the league uh, this weekend, the standard of officiating was appalling, in specifically in about five games. Um, I don't see how Simicas literally sticking his leg out and tripping Christian Benteke up in the box whilst he's going for the ball isn't a pen. I don't see how you can foul the same player six times and not get a card. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you have an even even challenge for the ball um, and you give away a free kick and then in protest, your player receives a yellow card as well for Joel Ward, which is really strange. Um, but, you know, these these things happen in football and it, and it is part of it. But Liverpool did what they needed to do. Sadio Mane continues to be a bastard against us, um, <laughs> scoring his one hundredth, his one hundredth Liverpool goal and his ninth goal in a row uh, in fixtures against Palace, one in each game. Blimey. Wow! Y- yeah, but you know what? I think there were good signs there. We came very close at the end. Edward again looked very, very bright. Konate had to defend really, really well. I think, um, and Allison, uh, you know, performed exactly as as, as you would expect him to. Um, to to see us off, but I, I, kind of like after the Chelsea game, I didn't feel bad after that result. No, you know, I felt good. It was we've gone to, you know, at, at Chelsea we still needed to settle in a bit, but then against Liverpool, who who are at the top of the league for the scoring charts and wildly underperforming their xG, yeah, um, that if we'd have sat off and done nothing, you know, we were competitive, we were scrapping, we were getting in there and actually, you know, making shots and making attempts. And so it's not a Roy Hodgson team and and I'm I'm okay with, you know, that 3-0 loss. That's not a type of game we're going to target. We still have five points. Yeah, and especially Um, off the back of 3-0 over Spurs, like, you know, you can kind of tolerate a Liverpool. You'd have taken the three points out of two games, wouldn't you? Yeah, three points from from the three games against Chelsea, Liverpool and Spurs would have been massive. Yeah. So yeah, and what's what's weird is at the minute. I mean, like I think we've looked good defensively, but actually, I'm trying to think of a good way to to spin this. We're kind of the most underperforming defense as well, um, but even un- underperforming the most of the numbers. We've still only conceded eight goals um, across the, the the five games, and considering you know Who you've six played. of those were against yeah. Chelsea and Liverpool. Yeah, we've also played West Ham, Tottenham. Every every team that we have played so far this season has been unbeaten. Uh, you know, obviously the first game of the season doesn't really matter, but all, all these teams have been unbeaten before we played them. So, you know, it's it's not been the easiest run to start off the no, season. You, so and you, we talked about that. You're, you don't have a good fixture till November. Like your schedule is atrocious. So that you are where you're at is genuinely commendable. Like I'm not shit talking. Like genuinely, you guys have yeah, looked quite good. It's good vibes. Yeah, so the Vieira boner continues then. Very happy times over at Palace. Mm-hmm. Excellent. I mean, not not conceding an open play goal to Liverpool is something to you know something to say. It's just it, hopefully, yeah. oh, you know, like you say, conceding uh, set pieces is something hopefully can be worked on. You know, you've got a new manager, you've mm-hmm. got a new young squad, so hopefully that sort of thing can be ironed out. No, exactly, I, and I'd rather have one clear identifiable weakness than just 
shit across the board. Yeah, like, that's true. We've clearly worked on our possession and our one touch and our collective yeah. passing and having options and you know generally pressing, not sitting back on the counter, um, and being able to take it to other teams. That if like set pieces is just going to be the concern, you keep building on the other things and then you know. You bring it maybe we'll bring in as i don't know if we have a set piece coach i don't think we do but you bring in someone like that and then all of a sudden that that corrects that and you get to take up to the next level so no i think fair play to liverpool they're they're at the top of the league um for a reason only conceded one goal uh, <clears throat> excuse me liverpool are not top of the league thank you very much it uh, goes to the me. sixth I tiebreaker the top of the league up at the top okay, of fair the enough, league. fair enough i just want that six tiebreaker to get acknowledged we are in first place because we got the away draw otherwise exactly is that, is that what it's coming down to is it yeah absolutely yeah it's points <laughs> then goal difference then goal scored then head-to-head record and then head-to-head away points which is where we're at wow. because we got away draw at liverpool okay. yeah all five all five results for chelsea and liverpool have been the same result on the same week each week. Huh. Yeah, same score line, same everything. Exactly. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Wow. While we're on Liverpool, I do want to say that I uh, think that I was wrong on my take on them. That's not a sentence I like to say out loud very often. Uh, but we're approaching, like I said, the sample size of where things start to be relevant with their numbers. And their numbers look really good. They look good on the eye test. The whole, like, these old guys might start to drop off thing does not seem to be playing out at least not yet. Uh, Jota is is gelling really nicely with them. Like, I'm scared of Liverpool. I think they might be in the Chelsea City conversation. Like, it might be a three-way race as opposed to a two-way race, at least if I'm updating my views. Um, so praise to Liverpool as much as it hurts me to say out loud. Mane looks good. Salah looks good. These guys look at that elite level like they did a couple of years ago, and that scares me. Um, underperforming for goals. Yeah, underperforming. You owe, like, and I was going to say this about Palace too. You would much rather be underperforming than overperforming. Obviously, you want to just perform, but of the two, underperforming bodes well because it means that as you regress to the mean, you're gonna get better. So I don't like that they're <laughs> that they're underperforming on top of everything else. Um, it scares me. It scares me. And their underlying numbers, they're second to City in pretty much every category, and barely. Uh, City's plus one point nine zero x goal difference per ninety. Liverpool one point eight eight. So, like, pretty much exactly tied. I mean, they're only underperforming because Jota's sitter that he missed. I mean, that was, that was like 4xG, <laughs> probably, about 4 uh, or 5. I yeah, yeah, four, yeah, normally you get five goals for that. Yeah, yeah just what? smash that in, five goals. <laughs> so, auto-relegation for him? Just him. Everyone else gets to stay, but he's relegated to the championship. Literally hit said from four yards out. <laughs> it was a bad one. one. I did look it up. It was 0.7. Which, again, that no, sounds like, like it's too low, but that's insane. Because that's as much as a penalty is worth. Yeah. Uh, but I guess, I don't know, Liverpool scares me. What are you, are you guys changing your views on Liverpool so far? Or you still have them around fourth place? Like, where are you at right now? Give me a temperature check here. For, for me, it's it's just squad depth that might be the problem compared to the other sort of three big players. I think I think if injuries bite... Liverpool might struggle. But if they get, th- if, you know, if they get through it without injuries, their starting 11 is as probably as good as anyone's so it's i think mm-hmm. it's just the injury thing whether that happens fair enough what about you chuck yeah same i i had them third but it's uh, you know it's much of a much this i think in that top three i had chelsea then city then liverpool and i don't necessarily change my take there fair enough um although i mean that gives us a good m- point to to move off into the next fixture absolutely really. yeah i was about to so we had next uh 10 a.m slash 15 p.m slash 7 a.m fixture uh, depending on your time zone, was Manchester City 0, Southampton 0, Man City 1.0 to Southampton's 0.4 on XG. Uh, this was a terrible match. Really boring. Really bad. Um, City looked bad. City looked, uh, you know, sort of stranded for ideas against Southampton. Pep is picking fights with the supporters groups this week. I don't know if you guys saw that one. Oh, um, yeah. Not good things at, at City right now. For, I guess I should give context for the picking a fight thing. He came out after the Champions League match and was like, it'd be pretty fucking nice if we had some fans in the stadium sometimes. <laughs> I, think I don't was, think he said it that aggressively. Not that aggressive, but I think it was 15,000 empty seats for a Champions League game. Like, what the fuck? And then the supporters groups were like, oh, we don't really appreciate the manager saying that we need more fans, blah, blah, blah. And then he came out and he doubled down. He was like, nah, fuck you guys. <laughs> really, there's not enough of you. We need to have a better home field advantage. Which is hilarious because everyone makes fun of City, including their own manager, for their shit home support. 
but yeah, I don't know. Where are you at? Was this just a one-off thing? Are we are we changing our views? You know, we updated our, or at least I updated my view on Liverpool. I haven't changed my mind on City at all, but like, where are you guys at? I mean, they were like 13th in November last year and won the league at a canter. So we don't, you, you can't ever write them off. I know the game has changed slightly, but, you know, they're fifth now. Um and it's not, you know, they're not that that far behind um, the the top three. So I don't know. I there there have been a few times where I haven't been convinced by City. I think this Pep coming out with the supporters group. Um, obviously, he spoke about what he was going to do at the end of this contract at the start of this year, which already in a way feels a bit like a checking out. Um, in some ways, like I know I'm done. Like I'm. He's going to start winding down now. Um, pop, pop my feet up in front of the fire, read a nice paper. So, yeah, it's just, I mean, fair play to Southampton being able to keep City out. I, I don't really understand what happened with the Kyle Walker thing, the penalty, the red card. The Did he did he stop him? Did he, he like, sat on him? He basically just took, took out the Southampton player and then like not only was it not a penalty but it wasn't a red card and even he was laughing about what was going on and yeah you know if players are going to be arguing Pep's going to be picking fights like that's not necessarily good signs the vibes feel a bit off yeah I will say you know they're the I mean that's like the least analysis like just pure narrative <laughs> bias thing to say but the vibes feel <laughs> off to me I don't know um, but that doesn't really scare me because their numbers are good. It is weird, a bit weird, you know, when you look at the numbers and City, literally, they've conceded one goal. They have the best expected goals allowed. They have the second best XG. Right. Um, you know, their expected points is the highest. Um, so they're first for that. But it just doesn't necessarily feel right. I don't know. The fan, the fans and the ticket thing, like, I think it's such an easy stick to beat them with. Um, I know there have been a lot of clubs that where the ticket measures have switched um, to e-tickets completely as part of a league rollout, there have been a lot of games where fans have been queuing outside for like an hour because they can't get in um, and all sorts. And also that's then led to some people not renewing their season tickets or cancelling them or not really going on because, you know, everyone jokes about City trying to sell tickets for like £12.50 on uni websites to get students in or like anyone and it's, you know, I find it quite funny that people will slag off how expensive football is, but then slag off a club yeah, for giving cheap tickets as well. Yeah, absolutely. If it, yeah, that's a good <laughs> thing. Like, <laughs> and yeah. and to be honest, like going to football is expensive, yeah, fucking and is. it's not, you know, it's not like an incredibly apart from like football tourism. Like football was always kind of the working class sport. Mm. Um, so it's not exactly people that are wealthy backgrounds. And when when City are going to play literally <laughs> probably every game of every tournament down to the finals this year and last year, like people don't have the cash for that. Yeah. No. Like it's a lot. I, so, I couldn't justify going to see Peterborough every week, let alone going to see a Premier League team every week. There's no way I could justify that spend. Even if the, And even yeah. if City are one of the cheapest, like it's it's all relative and... and you know, if they were full, people would probably be complaining, yeah, but all their fans are plastic. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, right. oh, they're just yeah. tourism. I don't think it's a win win there. And I don't think it's fair because City, you know, yeah, they've had big money, but I can remember City being in like League One. 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's not that long ago that they were right down there and had to lie to players like Robinho that they were joining yeah. the other team in Manchester <laughs> to get them. And, you know, <laughs> this, so yes, that. Yes, that happened. They tricked him. He thought he was signing for Manchester United. Um, Brilliant. I love that day so much. Mark Hughes was on the golf course because he thought, well, I've got no more business to do on transfer deadline day. And then he just got a phone call said, you've got unlimited money, off you go. <laughs> it was just like, yeah. Ah. Mark Hughes. Yeah. Mark Hughes. All right, so something to keep an eye on. The numbers don't indicate anything, but the vibes might be off, so we'll see what happens. All right, well, let's move on then to the last Saturday game. We had Aston Villa 3, Everton <laughs> Zero Aston Villa, 1.3 to Everton's 0.7. Uh, that is a wildly misleading scoreline. 1.3 to 0.7 is is pretty close. Um, Everton, man. Fucking Everton. Oof. What's up with yeah. Everton? They're, they're, they're bad. Things bad in uh, over in Liverpool on the Everton side, on the blue side. Yeah. I mean, Everton had some... some... 
unexpected injury issues quite late on, apparently. So Pickford was out, mm-hmm. uh, Seamus Coleman was out, Richarlison was out. They've got, with Calvert Lewin out as well, means they're not necessarily, well, I was going to say not necessarily operating with a recognised striker, but of course then Chuck would shout Solomon Rondon at me as loud as he could. Um, it, was a, it was a weird one, this, because I, I watched this, and while you're right about, you know, the XG indicating that it's not a 3-0 victory. Aston Villa was so dominant in that 12-minute period where they got the three goals and Everton just looked absolutely stunned. And and they just couldn't couldn't deal with Villa at all. I mean, when when Matty Cash can run through you like a knife through butter, it's a bit of a worry, I think. So, yeah, they did they didn't seem at it at all and once once they went 1-0 down, heads dropped big time. And they never picked back up. No, they didn't. They didn't offer anything. I mean, it was it was a a, a shock to the system. It was like, like I say, three goals within something like 10, 10, 12 minutes, something like that. And no, they never they never offered anything after that. All right, what about the Villa side of this truck? Talk to me about Villa here. Um, it's nice to have a Bailey in there. No relation. Uh, I don't know. Maybe on my mother's side. Yeah. Who knows? Let's do. A, who do you think you are? <laughs> Who do you think you are? Oh, wait a minute. Um, yeah, Villa, you know, we were doubting them a bit. They hadn't really done much the last few games. Um, had some bad results. It kind of mixed, especially the promise that we fought after the heavy investment. Obviously, they were hurt a bit by the Argentinian players. Um, Martinez, Buendia being out. But, you know, looked to kind of be... I mean, it's be a bit of a hot take to say they were coming out of it, but that's exactly the kind of result you want off the back of a loss, just going and pounding uh, Everton, a team that they're probably going to compete for a similar level in the league this year, if anything, if yeah. last season's anything to go by, looking at that mid-table kind of area. Um, exactly what you want, because you know Everton did not look at it. Um, they were very much playing like a B team, and, and you know Villa took massive advantage of that at a time where Dean Smith was apparently being touted as maybe being for the chop. Um, and, and, and being the first casualty of the year, which would have been a bit mad. But mm. no, nothing nothing really groundbreaking to say here, unfortunately, for me. All right, well, then let's move on to the Sunday fixtures. And Mr. Stimson, please cue the jingle. Oh, they're better than they ought to be. Burnley of the week. That's right, we had a Burnley of the week. Chuck's behated Brighton. Putting down Leicester City 2-1, 1.4 to 1.8 on the XG. That is a stretch as far as Burnley of the week goes, but it's really the only one that went significantly against the XG scoreline. What up? What up, Leicester? What up, Brighton? Absolute pricks. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Just (laughs) fucking... I mean, we mentioned... I mentioned the refereeing earlier, and there's, there's a lot of flashpoints in here, but Brighton's first goal came from a penalty, which is... One of the most ridiculous things I've seen. Ball comes in from a cross, um, I believe, for Brighton. Vestergaard goes up to jump for it, but little does he know that that absolute scumbag, Neil Morpé, is literally <laughs> hanging off his arm like a fucking koala. Like, two arms round him. So Vestergaard goes to jump. Obviously, when you jump and you get pulled down, your body goes to one side. Vestergaard's arm comes up in the air and he turns and then it hits the Brighton player behind him. He heads it into Vestergaard's arm and Brighton get a fucking penalty. VAR doesn't look at it. It it doesn't get overturned. Like, the ref doesn't go and look at the screen. They're all obviously saying, like, it's ridiculous. He He genuinely did have two arms on him and was like, hanging down like pulling his weight why down why did he not go and review it but that's been across the board this week and then yeah. obviously Leicester later on they had two goals disallowed both were supposedly because Harvey Barnes was blocking the view of um, Sanchez which for the first one you can kind of that that one fair enough like the angles you kind of look at it and Barnes is directly in front of Sanchez but on the second one he's yes he's in offside position but He's in no way is he in the eye line at all. Like you watch the slowed down tape, and it's it, he's probably like two yards out of the way on Sanchez's left as he looks to his right at the ball coming down and can see it the whole time. Leicester can feel incredibly hard done by for this result, and that's not just me with personal bias. Um, of course, they also haven't performed that well this year in general, but. Uh, 
that that's just a ridiculous bad beat all around um and that one completely stems from incredibly poor refereeing yeah i mean the refereeing was dog shit everywhere i didn't see that incident um i wonder if that's because of the stupid new the handball rules and how like they changed what's a handball what's not i mean they change it every fucking year um in the penalty that sounds pretty egregious but like i don't know um they could just be implementing really stupid rules correctly like they did when far first came out so it it can't be though because it's like it's a foul to to make it happen. Yeah, so like, like it should be dead before his it body, hits his, his arm. His body's only in an un- unnatural position because like if he jumped, his hands, you know, like you use your hands to jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you you come up and bring your body up. I'm doing literally doing the motion as I'm sure <laughs> most of you are now. You know, like when a manager watches a guy go up for a header, <laughs> does yeah. it with him? Right? <laughs> does it with him? Of course he does. Um, live by proxy for the goal. But, like, he's obviously going to try and do that. But then, like, when you get pulled down completely on one side, like, one arm's going to go up. It's just... I I don't understand how there can't be more criticism of referees or, like, more of an assessment. Because I'm starting to think that, like, the game is moving too quickly for these people to actually be able to do it. Now, whether that's an inability of the referees or a lack of training, a a lack of experience or or just the way they're trying to run the games but they need help they need help to be able to do this and this whole the referee can't be overturned by someone who's not their thing is fucking ridiculous if you do want the right decision or you want the wrong decision and they're gonna let their ego take over and for example not let linesmen give things because you know we had the handball um, for West Ham's penalty right at the end of, of that game, which was obviously hilarious for many reasons. Yeah. <laughs> but like the linesman's right there and can clearly see that Luke Shaw sticks his arm out at 90 degrees and blocks it, but he doesn't give it. And so uh, it's just baffling. It's just absolutely baffling. And, and I really feel for it because like managers are stuck in positions that they can't say anything then without getting a massive fine? Like, why can't, in some ways, referees be held accountable? Why don't they explain the decisions? Why can't it be critiqued? Why can't it just be... Why can't they be overruled by fucking VAR if if it's literally a terrible decision? Why can't the managers, you know, have an NFL style, can challenge a certain number of uh, decisions a game if they're in certain situations? Like, that's... it. It's... You know, I don't want to try and say, oh, it's, you know, it's completely broken and changed the game, but like, it's fucking stupid. Like, the referees can't do it. No. Half the time, they're not in good positions because they aren't fit enough. Yeah. They can't get there. So, would you be in Games- favour of like, uh, you know, the cricket style system where each team gets one or two reviews? They've they've got a you know they, there's a timer on them, so they've got a use they've got to use that review within like ten seconds of the incident. Uh, so as it hopefully doesn't slow down the game. And then the off-field referee has the call. So if it's inconclusive, they'll stick with the on-field call. But if it, if the uh, VAR referee feels it's it's conclusive, then they can overturn it. And they'll, they'll buzz them and say, overturn your decision. Is that the sort of thing you'd want? Yeah. I mean, that, that sounds great. Or, you know, I've said before, two referees that are, you know, on the pitch or, you know, whatever, like... Yeah. Like assistant referees, if if and and my dad's a referee and has been for a long time and has known a lot of referees at all levels, be it Sunday League all the way through up to the top flight. And certain referees will tell their linesmen, "I don't want you giving any free yeah, kicks." Yeah, yeah. Wow. it's a simple fact. They will tell them that because it's like I'm the guy who's in control. Like I get to give it, and it's that's fucking dumb. Yeah. Because then like, what's the point of an assistant referee being there other than an arbitrary line judge? Bro, put a fucking GoPro on a line, save yourself however much a year. Yeah. I, I, it never, like I'm, I came to soccer later. You guys know this. I grew up playing basketball, being a basketball fan. Um, and a basketball court is like a eighth the size of a soccer field. And there's 10 total players on the basketball court between the two teams. And they have three referees. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's because of the speed. It's because of how, like, Mm. close things happen that you need to be able to see things that are, like, two inches apart sometimes. Like, how how there's only one referee refereeing a soccer game running around on that giant-ass pitch. Like, that's never made sense to me at all. Um, And, yeah, I mean, the linesmen are there. But, like, like you said, a lot of times they're not really there. They're not doing anything. Even now they don't put their fucking flags up because of the VAR rules. 
This happened in the Chelsea game. There was a Chelsea game where the guy was like very obviously offside. The linesman didn't raise his flag because, you know, they're not really supposed to, or sometimes they are supposed to, sometimes they're not, no one's even sure anymore. <laughs> he doesn't mm-hmm. raise it. It goes out for a corner because like the defender and or keeper made like got a touch on it to stop it from scoring. And then the corner that should have been an offside shot, but that wasn't raised because in case it gets scored, VAR looks at it. Now they have a corner. That corner can't get called back. So if like it didn't come to anything. But if they had scored from that corner because the linesman isn't raising their flag on a, a very obviously offside situation, like they do need to, I think, really sit down and look at like how we referee this game. Um, not that they will because they're fucking idiots and old fashioned and nothing ever changes ever. But yeah, I'm, I'm like fully with you there. Like it's fucking insane that there's only one referee mm-hmm. for a soccer game. The inconsistent, there seems to be inconsistency now with the linesman flags, which is pissing off defenders because then it's, yeah. it's giving so much of an advantage. Like, I mean, obviously you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't stop anyway, but it's like sometimes I'll see like that where it's incredibly obvious. Like there's so much daylight between players and they won't put the flags up. And then you'll see they're super close, and they will put the flag up, which has to stop the play. And, and it, it, there's there's no consistency there if it's a marginal call or, or a big call, because then what happens, especially if it leads to like a one-on-one, and then a player makes a professional foul, so like what then? Something that shouldn't have been a play, then potentially you've got a player out injured, another guy's red card, and, and that thing shouldn't have ever fucking happened? Like, it's so weird. They really need to just fucking automate offside. All those guys are running around with the sports bra with the tracking chip anyway. Like, they're all wearing it. The clubs look at that data. The league looks at that data. Like, just fucking put a GPS chip or something, an RFID, anything. Oh, my God. Make it like laser tag. Sure. Make it like laser tag. (laughs) And if they go offside and the ball gets played, like, they all get like... And then they all know to stop. There you go. I'm not talking, not saying like electrocuted, but like it, it, just, was, it sounded like you were saying electrocuted. Yeah, <laughs> it did. you know what I mean. And then you'll get people hacking it, and from the stands they'll just <laughs> shoot it. And, oh, I'm out. Oh, <laughs> never mind. You have to run back to the corner flag to recharge. Uh, all right. Well, let's talk about the other 9 a.m. game here. Uh, we had West Ham scoring one, putting up 1.6. Uh, Ian's beloved Mark Noble coming on oh. in like the 95th minute for a penalty substitution. Oh, I felt for him. Bless oh, it did not go well, as you can tell from Ian's groans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ian, do you want to talk about your boy and the West Ham situation in this game against the Red Team? Oh, what a shame. What a shame. It was such a great moment. The West Ham fans celebrating that uh, penalty given in the last couple of minutes. Bringing Mark Noble on, hasn't touched the ball yet, which was the subject of some controversy. I don't know what you guys think about it, whether, you know, you've got your recognised ancient penalty taker on the bench, whether you should bring him on without any warm-up at all and, and let him take the penalty. Or I mean, Antonio wasn't playing, so you didn't have him. So may, maybe there's literally no other penalty takers, but um, it wasn't a terrible penalty, well, was it? But yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it was a pretty good. terrible um, penalty. You think? Declan oh, Rice okay. was there, so it's a bit of a confidence knocker for him. But yeah, that's also, true. yeah, yeah it, I think it's situational. Like David De Gea hadn't saved the penalty in like his last forty-four, if you include penalty Jesus. shootouts or something ridiculous like right. that. Well, they did have that one forty-four shot penalty shootout. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it, I think it went to. S- I think it went to 16, 17. That was crazy. It, it went through goalkeepers by a way. Um, but still, so like you fancy it in that situation. And, and there's something to be said, like, you know, not having tired legs. I probably would have liked his legs to have been a bit warmer when he came on. <laughs> yeah, he needed an outlap. Those tires were a bit cold. <laughs> yes, he should have just just run round, run up to the other penalty spot. They'll come back. Oh, I've got the wrong end. Sorry, ref, you have to go. Oh, got conf- I wonder why there was no one here. Um, there's your warm up done. But yeah, that was a shame, especially because it was last kick of the game. That would have been good to tie it up. Um, and but West Ham should have had a, a penalty a lot, lot longer before oh, that. What was that um, about? We talk about bad defending. Um, my boy Wan Bissaka just, <laughs> just completely took Suchek out. That's, like it's all right, though he got the free, he got the round, free kick for it. So cleared him out, and yeah. then yeah, then United got the free kick for it, which is really weird. Um, and then there was another two dives by a certain player who um, it dives doesn't get a penalty but then also doesn't get booked for simulation mm. that's uh hmm. yeah hmm. yeah i mean i have no comment on the red team fuck the red team i'm not talking about them um but yeah i don't know sucks i wanted west ham to do something here 
I really did. They did look they did look good, I thought, for a lot of the game. I mean, it was 1.6 to 1.8 on XG, so it was close. They played them to a draw, to a 2-2 draw, really, basically. Yeah, they played well, and they've been, and they've been good this year. Like, they've, they've started off really, really well, and to do that performance without Antonio, who has been fantastic this year, mm-hmm. um, you know, he, he gets a bit of a rest. Yeah. Um, after they, you know, they played in the Europa League, they went to uh, Zagreb, I think, yep. and they won two 0 away. So great, great result there to kick off their European campaign for the first time in, God knows how long it is now, um, probably about sixteen years or so, I reckon, something mad like that for their their first European fight. So, you know, it's good times at West Ham. I think they they'll probably feel a bit hard done by, but you know, XG differential per ninety, they're fourth. Um, if you uh, sort the table by expected points, they are one of the closest teams to where they should be. I think they're the third closest team to their actual position. So, you know, at least that's something. Your performances are deserved. And Leeds, Brentford and Everton in the next three, they've got a chance to put a little run together, I think, because, uh, yeah, they could do well there. If they can get, I don't know, six points out of those three games... If they don't get six points out of those three games, then they should be looking at themselves sideways. Like, <laughs> on, no, honestly, like they're yeah. they're a good enough team that they should be expecting that. And if they yeah. don't, that should be disappointing to them. Yeah. All right. Well, shall we? Uh, shall we get to the big one then? The big, the big, 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 big match of the week. Nah, no time, mate. <laughs> no Sorry. time. All right. Yeah. We had uh, Tottenham zero, Chelsea three. Uh, Tottenham zero point eight to Chelsea one point nine on X. G, the overwhelming majority of that was in the second half. I believe the second half was 1.3 to 0.1 on XG. Um, from the Chelsea side for this, the another halftime substitution um, made necessary by poor play in the first half. I think it was 0.7 to 0.6 in the first half, so pretty much playing level with not a good Tottenham team. Uh, 20th or 19th in many categories, unexpected Tottenham team. Um, so that was troubling. Obviously, you got to be happy after a 3 0 win. I said I mostly or only cared about results this year. I was texting you guys annoyed, and then Chuck was like, Bro, I thought you only fucking cared about points. And you were like, You know what? You're right. I should be in a better mood because we're top of the table um, on the fifth or sixth tiebreaker, as I mentioned, having away points and away draw at Anfield uh, being the reason. But I don't know. I think uh, I'll, I'll. Chuck, we gave you like 10 minutes last week to rant about Palace, so I'm going to take mine <laughs> this week. Um,. I should be in a better mood about Chelsea. We're in first place. We keep winning by a bunch of goals. And I think I'm going to be like a negative Nelson on this one <laughs> this week because I have more questions than joy at the moment with Chelsea. Uh, specifically, that we have to keep making halftime subs is really troubling. Uh, that we look so shit without Conte on the pitch is pretty troubling. Um you don't, you know, we brought in Saul for cover, but like, you know, there's no one that is N'Golo Kante and he is getting older and he is oft injured. Um, and if we need him to be the level that we are, that's really troubling. And the change in system, I don't think has been working particularly well. Uh, and our underlying numbers do sort of indicate that. I think we're sacrificing too much just to bring the best out of Lukaku or try to bring Lukaku into the game. Um, specifically by too much, I mean Kai Havertz and Mason Mount. Uh, both of whom don't particularly look that great, at least so far, in the 3-5-2. So we have Havertz playing as a second striker off Lukaku and Mount dropping deeper into a midfield three with Jorginho and Kante or Jorginho and Kovacic or whoever else is playing in there. And I think both of them have, like, they were superstars last year, especially in the second half under Tuchel. And now, I don't know. Obviously, signing Lukaku was a great thing. They saw an area of need. They brought him in. Um, but the change in system hasn't hasn't gelled hasn't felt really right our numbers aren't great what are we uh one two three four five sixth unexpected goal difference per 90 um that's not great i'm not particularly happy about that because again you don't you you regress to your numbers but timo at least timo got some minutes immediately got an assist spread the play created chances love when timo's on the pitch where are you guys at am i crazy am i just being like really 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 negative and crazy for no reason You've conceded one fucking goal and it was a penalty and you were playing Liverpool with 10 fucking men for like more than half a game. Yep. Shut up, you privileged prick. 
Okay. All right. Fair enough. I mean, oh, fair I'm enough. not happy. My team is top of the league. Oh, we signed this incredible striker who is exactly the need that we needed. <laughs> yep. And then the person you're applauding is the fucking cursed child who was through one on one three times yeah. with the goalkeeper yeah. mm-hmm. and couldn't fucking score. Yeah. Had to get rid of it for someone else. Lukaku kept fucking passing to him for some reason. Like, bro, <laughs> take your shot. <laughs> This is ridiculous. Uh, you're just mad because you wanted fantasy returns for Lukaku. Chelsea, yeah, obviously. But Chelsea <laughs> are just choking the life out of other teams. And, you know, there's this Tuchel, this Tuchel quote going around um, from when he came in. And it's just like, I want to make teams hate to play Chelsea. And I think you've got that. Like, you look at City at the minute. I don't think you're probably playing City at a better time. Um you know, and City then also have Liverpool afterwards. The complexion of of that top top set of um, top five teams could look completely different in two weeks' time. Yeah, yeah. Brentford will be top of the league. Brentford Brentford won't be top of the league. <laughs> uh, but although Chelsea will have a bit a lot to say at the top, because if you have got City and then you play Brentford in two weeks, you know that's where you know you get you get the push on your um, West London title rival question mark so am I way off the mark here then or do you guys like obviously I am I shouldn't be so negative fine but the questions I'm raising do you not see anything to that at all not really there's been questionable picks and 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 uh, Chelsea have played players that aren't necessarily what you would think would be their first team players and then they've still just won every game apart from drawing with Liverpool I'm I'm sort of a chuck I think that the quality that you've got gives you that buffer that these things can go slightly wrong. Tuchel was absolutely furious, apparently, at halftime. Yeah. Um, you know, tore him off Even the after the match, he was, like, talking shit about the first yeah, half instead of we being were happy. Talking, we were talking about that, weren't we? Yeah, um, we were texting about that, sorry, during the, the post-match, where all Tuchel wanted to talk about was the first half. Not the second half, where they took Spurs apart and, you know, have just beat a... Uh, hmm, Rival? No. Um, <laughs> three nil. You know, it's it, he. He wanted to talk about the first half. He act. He seemed to want to dig out his players a little bit for for a poor first half performance where they didn't. They, you know, they didn't make Spurs worry at all. So it's. I think you're just you're you're dealing with a level of quality that just means that these little problems are are, are minor, and you've got a, a relatively new manager, and. I don't think these small problems are an issue because I think the quality you've got will out quite yeah. significantly. I mean, he was probably pissed off, though, because you conceded eight times the XG that Palace did the week before. Fuming. To Absolutely fuming. It's probably why he was fuming. <laughs> and, and generated less, less XG against them. You know, yeah. everyone wins 3-0. Yeah, fair it's enough. Make fair stuff enough. special. So, so the 1.3 uh, to 0. 0.1 second half does feel really fucking nice. It's nice to know that when we are actually playing, we are still like just light years above other people. Um, what about the Tottenham side, though? Talk to me about Tottenham. Tottenham, who are fucking atrocious. There were some scary moments in the first half. I've got to say that, that Tottenham were threatening a lot. Sun getting in, um, getting behind the back three uh, quite a bit. You know, when if, if Rudiger's not there, then the pace is a bit of a drop off yep. to um, Christensen and Thiago and Sun was making the most of that by being more advanced. I just, it's weird that Kane is dropping deeper and deeper and deeper, it seems. And it's not in the Mourinho system and the way he's yes. playing almost as a quarterback. No, it's like Kane in England when he drops deep and it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> exactly what it looks like, to be honest. Um, I don't, I don't know if, Right now, Nuno's delivering any sort of stability or we're seeing any sort of progress or what it is um, with Tottenham. Again, really, really early days, but he's not going to stay around long if this, if this is what Tottenham are going to get. Because this was this as well was, you know, I joke about the Palace result, but there was a lot of changes in there. Like there was, there was a half of maybe even less of their actual first team in there. This Spurs squad was like their first team. Like all the weapons that Nuno should have, and granted, it's against Chelsea, but they they should be playing better than that. I mean, I think. at this time last season, after five matches played, Tottenham were third on expected points, ahead of Chelsea, ahead of West Ham, ahead of a lot of very good teams, ahead of Manchester City. Uh, and this season, five second five matches into the season, they are sixteenth, sixteenth on expected points. Thank you, Chuck. 
Um, and we'd mentioned before, you know, they're last place for expected goals generated. And like also 16th, I think, 2019, 18, 17, 16, 15. They're, they're just, they're wildly overperforming. They're bad. They're bad. Like just bad. I don't know what other word to use. I just keep saying that word. <laughs> they fucking suck. Um, I mean, no offense, Chuck, but they lost 3 0 to fucking Palace. Like, none, none taken. What up with Tottenham? Is Nuno going to get fired first? Is he going to beat Arteta to the drop? Ooh, I mean, if recent fixtures are to go by, could be tight. What's the dog mayor up to these days? Can they bring him back out? <laughs> I don't know. He's probably in the under 23s or something like that still, because that's where he came from, I think. I think he was working with the under 23s before. But like I said, it's, it's not good football. It reminds me of Hodgson. It's pragmatic. It's turgid. Oof. You don't mind it if the results come. Um, but when the results don't come, fuck me, will you feel it? And you will fucking hate every minute of your existence. I mean, currently by Sorry, the... Sorry, Jeff. 538 have Tottenham at the same likelihood of relegation as Brighton. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, not good. But yeah, sorry, Jeff, I guess. I mean, I'm not sorry because I hate Spurs, but... It's funny, Ian, actually, you said rivals, question mark. Uh, I was texting my buddy Nick, who I've mentioned a couple of weeks ago. He's just getting into the Premier League, really, for the first time. And he goes, how do you feel about this match? Like, is is this a team you care about? And I was like, weirdly, I think this is the team I hate the most and, like, desperately want to get a good result against more than anybody. Because, like, there's always so much fucking violence when we play Spurs, and it's always an exciting game. And I fucking hate them. (laughs) I, I do hate them. Like, this is one of the... On the calendar, like, this is a match that I'd really, really, really want. So I'm just glad that we got it. Uh, shall we transition then to me not hosting anymore and other stuff? Okay, Oscar, I'll take up the mantle. But before we quiz, um, obviously, I would like to give a shout out to our Patreons, all of them, beautiful, lovely people. And you can join us and help support this podcast in whatever way you can with a little bit of money, a little bit to kind of keep us going with hosting fees and also get some great content for yourself. Um, if you head to patreon.com forward slash miles offside pod, there's all kinds of stuff there. Reminders about FPL deadlines. Reminders about FPL deadlines. I'll do that for you. I will set Personal those alarms. Reminders. You can yeah. nap happy. Um, that's a producer level perk, I guess. <laughs> um, but something I did mention uh, last week, which you can access at the stats robot level, is Oscar's patented fixture rater. Now, naturally, this is proprietary products. We will not be divulging <laughs> the secrets of this here. Um, but something we did this year that I thought would be quite interesting um, was to basically back the stats and follow it along with bets. Um, So literally every fixture of each game week, I've been following it along um, with bets uh, as per Oscar stats. And if you'd have been following us so far um, in what Oscar would say is the least reliable time of the season um, with £10 bets on each fixture, you'd be up about £61 at the minute. Fuck. So not too bad eh? for about, what's that, a month and a half. So that's $8.00. Um, you can get the stats robots and get those kind of things. So we might drop in a few little nuggets here or there. We've done really well. A lot of draws have been thrown up and um, we've been winning on them as well. Um, so that's that's a good thing there. So just thought I'd give a little shout out for that. Something to uh, a bit of vindication Yay. for Oscar. That pleases me greatly, actually, because I'm quite proud of that fixture reader. I, I do a lot of sloppy stats in general um, because that's no longer like my profession is doing sports stats and analytics and stuff. Um, it's just for fun with you lovely gentlemen and our Patreons, but the fixture rater takes like a lot of XG data and like does some work to it and rates both in attack, in defense and overall fixture. Um, so there's quite a lot there and I'm, I'm pretty proud of the math of that one. It does, I think, uh, use XG in a pretty intelligent way, if I may toot my own horn. And it seems like us betting on it is paying off. So that's great. Whilst we also talk about what I mentioned last week, I told you gentlemen that you would need to revise some UEFA competitions. Now, this is the return of something that has been roundly lambasted by Ian in the past, but with a new fresh flavour. So, I bring to you, and no one will get this reference, Neil or Real or Meal! I'm just going to fade it out a little bit. <laughs> fade your mic out. 
<laughs> well, I'm not fit, just uh, do real that. hi fi yeah. stuff here from us. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. High tech. Couldn't get it on a soundboard. Never mind. Yes, it is, of course, Neil or Real or Meal. <laughs> this is the game where I will give you a team and you will need to tell me whether they are in the Champions League, the Europa League, or the Europa Conference League. <laughs> If you have to ask why it's called that, you'll never know. So, gentlemen, <laughs> get your pens and papers ready. Um, what you'll do is obviously tell me which competition it is and then extra points available if you tell me which country it is. Some of them are easy, some of them are hard. I just wanted to give out points. Okay. You, you, you do yeah? love points, yeah. I love points. Points is fun. Let's give everyone the chance to get as many points as you yeah. can. Right, so nice, easy one to get us started. Like I said, which competition are they in and which country are they from? Um, Liverpool. I wanted to make sure Oscar got at least two points this week. Cheers. Thanks, man. How, how do, do you, you spell F.A. Vars? <laughs> Rumbelows. The second team. A.C. Milan. Milan. Number the third. Red Star. Or Ravenia Schwezda. <laughs> Yeah, you like that? Fluent in every language. Team number four, Jose Mourinho's Roma. Team five, Glasgow Rangers. Remember, you want the competition and the country. Six, Ferenc Varos. Who? <laughs> Ferenc Varos. F-E-R-E-N-C-V-A-R-O-S. Ferenc Varos. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't vote for it. Um, number seven. Uh, One of Oscar's favourites, I think. Shakhtar Donetsk. Yay! <laughs> he always goes on about how he doesn't want to learn players from there. From Shakhtar? I like Shakhtar. We got William from Shakhtar, I think. No. I don't Who's know. Who's the team you always... There's literally one team in Europe that you always... Oh, Krasnodar. It's always Krasnodar. Damn it, I should have put Krasnodar in. Sorry. Never mind. I was like, no, I like Shakhtar. I'm pretty sure we got William from them. Axel Witzel came out of there too. They had a really good team around like 2011 for no reason. Uh, lots of Brazilians go to Shakhtar. They've had like a rich history of Brazilian players. Anyway, uh, number eight, Lincoln Red Imps. <laughs> Lincoln Red Imps? Lincoln Red Imps. I mean... Number nine is... <laughs> Galatasaray. Okay, right, fine, good. After Lincoln Red Imps, I'm just delighted to hear Galatasaray. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, dear. And the last one, Basel. Basel, for our American listeners. <laughs> <laughs> we know Basel. We can say Basel. That's pronounceable. Like the herb, only not spelt the same. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Do you guys pronounce the herb as basil as well? Correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were trolling. No, no, no. That's basil, but the city is basil. Because, you know, when it's an I, you don't pronounce it like an E, England. Or should I say England? But you say basil. <laughs> like, it, there's no Y in it. Anyway. It's a, a can have two different sounds. Do you need any of the sounds. teams again? Let's not get into this linguistic shit. We literally <laughs> invented the language. Um, do you need any of the teams again? I'm just guessing. This is all guessing anyway, so... You know. So the answers then, Liverpool. They're from England. <laughs> uh, no, Scouse, not English. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and Champions League. Pun. Yes, obviously. they are, of course, Champions League and England. Uh, the next one, AC Milan. Ian, what did you get? Uh, I had Italy and I put Champions League. Ding, ding. Correct. Two points. <sighs> Same here. AC and, AC and Inter back in the Champions League. Uh Number three, Red Star or Kvenya Svezda. I didn't say the last word, which was Belgrade, but they are in the <laughs> Europa League and Serbia. Oof, oh, yeah. Serbia. Well. Shit. Yeah. Serbia, Europa League. And I knew they were from Belgrade. I just don't know where Belgrade is. Um, Roma. They are, of course, from Italy and they are in the Europa Conference Oof. League. Jose. Jose <laughs> dipping as low as the Europa Conference League. <laughs> Jose getting trophy. Jose going to knock out Tottenham. That's what's going to happen in the Europa <laughs> Conference. Oh, that would be delightful. 
That would be delightful. Yes. Glasgow Rangers are, of course, from Scotland, and they are in the Europa League. Ah. Oh. Europa. Ferenc Varos are from Hungary, ah. and they are in the Europa League. Yay. Oh, dear. I got that one. Shakhtar, uh, Champions League, Ukraine. Ooh, yeah. let's go. I'm interested. Right, Lincoln Red Imps. Where have we guessed that they are from? I said Oscar? the uh, Conference League and Ireland. Oh, oh Ireland. Ireland. What did you say? That's very clever. Um, I put Conference League and then I just thought of a country and put Portugal. Portugal. Well, you're both right on the league, but both wrong on the country. I feel a bit remiss because it's just a, it's a place, really. But Lincoln Red Imps are from Gibraltar. Oh. oh. The Rock themselves. I did not know that. Oh. So there we go. That's why I thought I'd drop them in this quiz and bring a bit more light into everyone's life. <laughs> Galatasaray are Turkish and they are in the Europa League. Yes. Oh, shit. I Champions League for that. Get Fuck. in. Ian, I think I'm smashing and you maybe. I don't know. Maybe You not. might be. Yeah, I don't know. I started Basel well. are Swiss. Yep. And in the Europa Conference. Ah, ah. I had the Europa League for that. Yeah, same Down way. in the bottom, uh, young boys are the Swiss representatives in the Champions League. So, to up your scores, let's see how many you get. I believe Ian is 3-2 ahead at this point. Yep, that sounds right. Uh, I have got 14 out of 20. Chuck, congratulations. I hope you prepared a tiebreaker. I also got 14. <laughs> I nearly prepared a tiebreaker, then I thought, no, nah, it'll be fine. Um, <laughs> do, 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 do. Just pick uh, any stat, and then whoever's closer is, is the winner, I guess, right? <laughs> like, okay, 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 all right, all right. Well, I guess if it's about uh, UEFA, um, closest wins, I would like... Oscar, I can see you on camera, so I would like you to write down your answer. Okay. And Ian, you will say your answer out loud, so okay. then we don't have anyone changing or doing that plus one thing. So, Oscar, let me know when you have written down an answer to how many countries are in UEFA. How many national association members of UEFA are there? So, let me know once you've written your answer down, I've but don't obviously down. say it. You've written something down? Yep. Okay, Ian, this is going to be closest win. So, Ian, please give me your answer for how many... Football Association or National Association members of UEFA you think there are? Uh, I'm going to go with 44. 44. Oscar has put 55. 52. Oh, no, he's put 52. The answer's 55. Cue up New York, New York. Oh, oh, baby. Oh, Let's go. It's up to you. Hey, hey, Three piece, three piece and a biscuit, maybe some gravy on the side. Congratulations, Mr. Oscar Puente. Yay, thank you. I mean, shock horror that Oscar knows more about Europe than Ian, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, fixtures. Let me make sure I get on the right game week. Not game week nine. Game week six, we start off with the mighty game, uh, one we're all going to want to watch kick off the day with Chelsea versus Man City. Can we just get a quick prediction? How do you think that's going to go, Oscar? Maybe a 20 seconds with a score? Uh, I think that Tuchel has Pep's number. I think that has is going to continue tactically. Um, I think that we have a Lukaku now, uh, you know, much like the <laughs> Avengers had a Hulk. And uh, I think we're going to win. I think 2-0. Two, 2-0. Two zero. Two zero. A cleanie as well. Nice. Um, weird. Hang on. Weirdly, we've got two games at the same time then. Huh. Uh, which is never really happens in the early Saturday kickoff, does it? No, it's really weird. That's weird. So the other side of Manchester are against Aston Villa. We then have Everton versus Norwich. That's not exactly filling me with confidence after this week. Leeds versus West Ham. West Ham obviously quite high. Leeds are going to need to attack. They have no defence. This could be fun. <laughs> um, Leicester against Burnley. Or Watford against Newcastle. That's in the blackout for a reason. <laughs> And then end of the day on, I think it'll be quite interesting to see this one as well. Brentford yeah. at home to Liverpool. Um, Liverpool obviously flying high, but Brentford, one of the best defences in the league, apparently. Um, Come but this on, is Brentford. their first test against one of the big teams uh, since coming up. 
Sunday. Shout out Arsenal. <laughs> Southampton. Yeah, exactly. I stand by what I said. Uh, Southampton are at home to Wolves. We then have the North London friendly dog shit derby. Um, the who gets sacked derby. I don't know. Um, the race to the bottom derby. Arsenal against Spurs, and then on Monday night, Monday night football. Oh, one um, you're interested the mighty, in, Chuck. mighty Eagles of Palace host the seaweed scum from down on the south coast, <laughs> um, and I will fucking be there. It's going to be great. I cannot oh, fucking nice. wait. Um, I'll be going straight from work. Um, I'll be wearing my new "I Want to Be Edward" T-shirt, <laughs> and uh, you know what? I t- genuinely, I think we win. Not even being churlish or against them. I don't think Brighton have been that good. They've been over, you know, overperforming. We've been performing well. Uh, I think that's going to be fun. And I'm going to match Oscar and say we've been 2 0 as well. Nice. Hey. So, you know, deal with it. Either that or I just won't fucking come back. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, there are, of course, Carabao Cup fixtures this week, the one they all want to win, except the one that City will probably actually win. So a lot of Premier League teams featuring, so bear that in mind for your FPL teams and all that kind of jazz, guys. But, I mean, that wraps us up, doesn't it? So thank you very much, as ever, for sticking with us through thick and thin, the good times and the bad mostly bad for you Jeff um, cheers mate so say goodbye Oscar Timo scores let's go he's not scoring say goodbye Ian goodbye oh who have Peterborough got this week uh, Coventry on Friday night ok I hope you win take care it's from me thanks very much Nate Whitton Johnny Worthington and Mark Daffin you're the best around nothing's ever gonna keep you down <laughs>